life with harmony. But if you want to be classy, play me Dungeons and Dragons. Hello! Hello. And welcome to the Future Girl Holiday Live Read Spectacular. My name is Amy Dallin, and I am here with Future Girl creators Rick Budd and Nick Gilman. Hello. With producer Alice Klamovich. Hi, uh, who you guys don't get to see enough of. With my co-stars, Gina DeVivo. Oh, hi. And Heather Wood. Hello. <laughs> and with a, a bunch of amazing guests, but to start with, our friends Jody Hauser. Hello. And Hector Lowe, two Hello. of the writers behind the material we're going to be reading tonight. Uh, and for folks who may not be familiar with y'all, would you briefly introduce yourselves? I'm um, Jody Hauser. I am probably best known for being a comic book writer. I'm doing stuff for DC and Marvel and Dark Horse and some other publishers. Um, Spider Man, Supergirl, Star Wars, stuff you may have yeah. heard of. Um, but I also, uh, several years ago, wrote an episode of Future Girl for these guys, uh, which we'll be reading tonight. Or they will be reading. I will disappear into the back where they keep the writers. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Hector Lowe, and I deeply regret asking her to go first. I <laughs> don't write for DC or Spider-Man or anything, but I am a, have a writer and a cartoonist. And uh, yes, a number of months and years ago, I was also asked to contribute to this uh, lovely program. So uh, what are we doing here today? Rick, Nick, Alex, you want to explain? <laughs> Okay, well, um, <laughs> when we first set out to do Future Girl, we were a little ambitious, and we wrote a couple of more episodes than we had time or resources to film, um, namely about 13. Uh, so it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah. Um, it was. It, at the time, and uh, on, you know, when it came time to film, uh, it eventually wound up as being three episodes and a couple of minisodes, uh, and... Uh, we, you know, we had a blast with those, and in the time since, we have tried to keep the project uh, going with uh, experimenting in different forms, uh, audio dramas, and we did the Minnesota serial, uh, and uh, we, we thought that this would be a cool way to use some of those extra scripts. Yeah, so we're uh, trying to recycle some of that content in the form of these live reads that you are about to see, um, including, obviously, uh, oh. Apparently, I'm going to that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Including, obviously, We're as we mentioned before, this. two episodes written by our wonderful guest writers here, Jody and Hector. Yeah. Um, we also just thought this would be, you know, something nice to do for our fans who have helped us get around 50,000 hits across our videos. Now. So nice. that's a nice feeling. Um, and uh, if it yeah. goes well, who knows? Maybe we'll do some more. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, everyone who is joining us right now or watching this later on YouTube. Uh, we've gathered together some amazing friends to help us do this. Uh, and you will meet them in just a minute. But first, to set the tone and to help add to the general era of festivity, we're going to be showing you some of those season one Future Girl episodes, starting with the pilot, Mojo No Mo. Enjoy, and when we get back, the reading begins. Mm -hmm. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our live reading of Future Girl. Uh, you've probably seen beautiful things, magical things. Maybe you've seen a flower or, or a sunset with mountains. Those things can go to hell. <laughs> what you are about to see tonight is truly magical, is truly beautiful. You are going to see a Viking. You're going to see a girl from the future. Did we actually get a Viking and a girl from the future? No! Why would you guess that? You're going to see acting. They're going to transform themselves into these characters. This whole table of people will transform themselves, and in your mind, you'll envision it. Will there be sound effects? Oh, yeah, there will be. <laughs> will there be someone reading the stage directions so we know what's going to happen? Hi. <laughs> did anyone know I was going to do this? They did not. <laughs> so welcome, 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 as we begin. <laughs> We were going to begin, it was really good, thank you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, as we begin our live table read of Future Girl. Future Girl, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Live read episode one, written by Jody Hauser. We open in the living room. It is night. 
Fury and Viking are thumb wrestling on the couch when M runs in from the kitchen carrying a tub of ice cream and three spoons. Ice cream for everyone! Distracted by the ice cream, Curie looks away. Viking seizes the moment and pins her thumb. Victory! <laughs> she throws up her arms in triumph. Once again, I am thumb wrestling champion of the living room. <laughs> M hands out spoons. What are we celebrating, Em? I got a new job. Didn't you just start working at that Dutch bakery this morning? Yeah, I told them I spoke Dutch since I figured I could just pick it up before I started, but it's really hard. <laughs> like learning a whole new language. <laughs> but, um, you know, long story short, I start the new job tomorrow, and it's at the new all-you-can-eat seafood buffet, Ocean's Eleven Ninety Nine. Eleven Ninety Nine? That's amazing! In the future, all-you-can-eat seafood is prohibitively expensive because sea creatures are extinct. They were too delicious for their own good. M digs into her ice cream with gusto. Should you really be spending money on ice cream before you get a paycheck? Oh, I didn't pay for this. I took this in protest after I got fired from the ice cream parlor two days ago. An excellent prize. Curie checks her watch. You should probably get to bed, Em. Future science shows that getting at least eight hours of sleep hypercharges the immune system, making one impermeable to all viral infection, especially the flu. Oh, thanks, Curie. You're always so, you always give the smartest advice. A title card appears. <laughs> what does it say on it? I'll tell you. <laughs> Almost eight hours later. We're in the living room. What time is it? I'll tell you. <laughs> it's morning. <laughs> morning in the living room. Morning in America. <laughs> this is going well. M stumbles in from the bedrooms. She's half dressed for work. She's in a sailor outfit. She is a mess. She coughs. She sniffles. The very picture of misery. She weaves around the living room for a minute. <laughs> Finally, M face plants on the couch. <laughs> Curie enters and notices M. What's with you? <laughs> Curie scans her with her multi. Well, this is no good. According to the scan, you'll never get to work if your body <sighs> remains this horizontal. I'm sick. Curie scans her again. Oh, yeah. You are lousy with the flu. M pulls herself up into a sitting position with a sad cough. Don't they have a vaccine for that? I swear, if I erased yet another medical breakthrough from history. My mom always said vaccines are just a way for the government to inject its citizens full of chemicals that make them stupid, paranoid, and incapable of critical thinking. So we never got any. <laughs> that is exactly oh, no. why America loses in the Canadian invasion of 2026. Oh. <laughs> Catman Scruthers hops up on the couch beside him. When you die, I am going to eat your face. Wait here. I have a future remedy that cures the flu. Why don't you watch some Crown of Betrayal or something? I'll be right back. Curie dashes off to her room. Various crashing sounds can be heard off screen. M picks up the remote and turns on the TV. The crown of betrayal background music comes in. Misty. I have tried every remedy you prescribed, witch. I have been plodded by leeches, eaten putrid fungus. I even cut out the heart of a virgin calf by moonlight. Yet, I am still too ill to serve my people. Then there is only one more remedy left to try, King Jorbert. We hear the sounds of stabbing noises <laughs> and screams. <laughs> I missed! I missed! Curie returns, hiding something behind her back. M pauses the show. <laughs> How does this work? First, I shrink myself down to microscopic size and insert myself into your bloodstream. Like in all the movies? Yes, but more painful and invasive. Once I'm in, <laughs> I navigate your circulatory system and locate the viral mother hive and or death star, depending on which strain of the flu this is. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> then what? Oh, dear me. Curie pulls a massive laser gun from behind her back, and she cocks it dramatically. <laughs> then I eliminate the virus with extreme prejudice. <laughs> cool! Are there any side effects? Mild headaches, slight nausea, and massive internal hemorrhaging. Are you insane? 
I hate being nauseous. <laughs> no way, no, it's not gonna happen. Unseen by Curie and M, Viking enters from the bedroom. She is casually polishing her helmet. <laughs> Alright, no problem. There's more than one way to fight this flu virus that's attacking you. This flu virus <laughs> has breached our hearth and besieged our friend M by Loki's horny helmet. This offense shall not stand to war! Viking dashes back towards the bedrooms. M and Curie watch her go and then turn back to each other as if nothing has happened. Look, I don't need to be cured. I don't care if I get people at my new job sick. I just can't miss my first day. Is there any way you can, like, hide my symptoms so that I can not get sent home? Well, that's an easy enough fix. Curie activates the multi <laughs> and shimmers <laughs> and vanishes. <gasps> Invisibility hides everything. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly! This is as a kid, I used to dream about being invisible so I could be the world champion at hide and seek. We hear the sounds of M's excited footsteps running off somewhere. Curie's head tracks the sounds across the room to the closet. The door opens. The contents of the closet rustle. And a moment later, the door slams. Guess where I am now? The closet? The closet door opens and we hear M return. How did you know? <laughs> I'll explain later. You've got to get to work. I can't go to work like this. I'm still sick. And invisible. Exactly. Since you're invisible, they'll never know you're sick. It's like showing up to work healthy. But since I'm invisible, they'll never know I'm there. It's like I never showed up at all. Viking returns from the bedroom with an armful of swords, axes, maces, and hammers. She deposits them on the dining room table. Choose your weapons, my homemates. She pulls a dagger from the pile. I will keep this hidden in my boot in case we need to take our own lives to avoid the disgrace of capture. She disappears back into the bedrooms. Curie, turn me back. Look, I respect you not wanting to be invisible, but why turn you back when we can turn you better? Again, Curie activates the multi. In a flash of light, M reappears in the form of a large, shaggy Bigfoot. What the? Bigfoot M hears the sound of her deep Bigfoot voice. Oh man, my voice is crazy deep now. <laughs> what did you do? By reworking your entire genetic structure to mimic the primitive yet formidable configuration of your ancient missing link ancestors, I've given you an enhanced immune system that will defeat the virus faster than your natural one. How much faster? <laughs> Slightly. Okay, I admit, that's impressive. <laughs> but I can't go to work like this. Viking enters carrying a shield. Upon seeing Bigfoot M, she drops the shield, lowers her shoulder, and charges! Fluvrous! Oh, God! I always transformed into a Bigfoot and slain by a Viking. I always knew it would end like this. <laughs> Viking looms above, threatening, suddenly wielding her war hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so you are the dreaded Fluverus who has sought battle with my allies. Prepare to meet your doom. She raises her hammer. Viking, no! It's me! Em! <laughs> Viking leans over and gives Emma a good, long sniff. <laughs> she immediately leaps up, looking embarrassed. Em, <laughs> it is you! Most clever, wearing the skin of a beast you slew in battle to fool our enemy. <laughs> Viking rushes off. Please turn me back. <laughs> Curie activates the multi. In a flash of light, M is herself again. She launches into a violent coughing fit. <coughs> There's only one thing left to try. Full... 
physiological reversal. Curie sets to work programming the multi. Unnoticed by the other two, Viking heads to the kitchen. She has a scarf tied over her face, and she's dragging a cauldron. I'll turn your entire body inside out. If I can't get to the virus, I'll bring the virus to me. Makes sense. We just need to figure out the best way to disinfect your externalized internal organs. <laughs> With you so far. The deluxe cycle at the car wash should do the trick. Deluxe cycle? What do you think I am, a yacht? Forget it, economy rinse or nothing. No, no, this <laughs> will work if you spend the extra two dollars. I said, <laughs> out of the question. A cloud of noxious looking fumes begins to emanate from the kitchen. Oh. This is just like in Crown of Betrayal when Sir Stefanion hung himself with his own intestines because no one would heed his economic wisdom. I thought Clavoxia with Bosomus murdered Sir Fanny and it made it look like suicide. No, no, Clavoxia was at the brothel meeting Prince Edwin. No, she lied about... Wait, how many seasons have aired by this date? Em's eyes grow wide. Spoilers? <laughs> Curie takes a step back. She is fearful. Look, I told you, discussing <laughs> ongoing franchises with time travelers was risky. Spoilers! <laughs> em launches herself at Curie, grabs her by the shoulders, and starts shaking her vigorously. Why can't you remember original air dates? <laughs> the noxious clown from the kitchen has reached them. Em stops shaking Curie. And they both sniff the air. Curie gags, Ugh. but M keeps sniffing. What is that smell? The gray hand of death? M lets go of Curie, and she flops to the floor. No, it smells like... eucalyptus. She inhales deeply, exhales, waits for the coughing to start. It doesn't. <laughs> I can breathe again! <laughs> Lucky you. Em leaps up and runs to the kitchen. Guess what? We're in the kitchen now. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening there? I'll tell you. Because <laughs> we like you. <laughs> Viking stands over her steaming cauldron, stirring it with a large stick. What is this stuff? Troll's bane. Tis a deadly poison. We used it to light on fire and dump it on invaders at the gates. M hugs Viking, who is clearly surprised at a sudden show of affection. Well, it cured me, and I think I can still make it to work. Thanks, Viking. M rushes off to the bedrooms. Viking stares after her. But I did not get to kill anything. Curie walks over casually. <laughs> well, looks like I cured M. Uh, you did not. Twas my troll's bane. Well, at least I didn't catch her flu. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's nothing. We are now in the kitchen through the magic of the theater in your mind. <laughs> what are we going to see there? Oh, friends, it's a credit sequence. <laughs> Curie coughs, clears her throat, and inhales the noxious looking crowds from the cauldron, or clouds from the cauldron. <laughs> Words are fun. <laughs> Enjoy them now. She inhales the noxious looking clouds from the cauldron to ease her now sore throat. Viking helps waft the fumes into her face, but that's not all. We're going to the living room now. Bazing! <laughs> what are we gonna see in the living room? Could it be a tag scene? Yes, God damn it, in court! <laughs> Viking sits alone at the couch. Damn you! She rises to her feet, Warhammer suddenly in hand, and shouts to the heavens! Flora! <coughs> she breaks down coughing and collapses back on the couch, and we end. Episode one. So that is episode one of our live read. Uh, stay tuned. We will be back in just one minute. But first, please enjoy the first of our mini zones, or one of them anyway. Lights out. Ooh. Everybody. Welcome back. Thank hey. you. Welcome indeed. <laughs> Takeover. Remember flowers? <laughs> and mountains. <laughs> Let's add some more things to that. <laughs> what would you say is something beautiful? 
Right. What would you say? Animals. Animals are beautiful. Thank you for your specificity. What would you say is beautiful? Uh, the sky. The sky is beautiful. Yeah. Heather? Oh, hamburgers? Oh. Yes. So we've got <laughs> Sorry, I'm really hungry. the concept of animals, <laughs> the sky, and hamburgers. Picture them now. Picture them in your mind. Picture their beauty. Again, they can go to hell! Because we are going to act. <laughs> Future Girl, Airman Viking, live read episode two, okay. written by Rick Budd. But that's not it. <laughs> also written by Nick Gilman. <laughs> Yeah. We are in the living room. It is day. Curie, Em, and Viking stand by the open door to the basement. An ominous wind blows up the stairs. Curie holds a genie lamp. If we can't get the evil genie back into her lamp, there's no telling what could happen. Then take me with you. My blow shall land with the strength of Thor's biceps. Not this time, my friend. It's too dangerous. I have to go alone. Wish me luck. Curie heads into the basement, closing the door behind her. A moment later, the door reopens, and Curie pops her head back out. Did you get it? Wish me luck because of the genie? That's funny, right? It had its moments, I guess. <laughs> Curie closes the door, leaving M and Viking standing together. See you at dinner. <laughs> she moves to leave, but M blocks her path. How come we never hang out? Are we not hanging out right now while assisting Curie in her fight against evil, against an evil genie from the planet of evil genies? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we hang out with Curie, but never just you and me. Hmm. I had not considered that. They look at each other, but neither really knows what to say. They walk <laughs> over to the couch and sit down on opposite ends. So, you're a Viking. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> Just then, the door to the basement bursts open and the multi comes flying out into the living room. Help! Oh, thank Odin. One of you, throw my multi back down here. Do not throw my multi back down here. That's not me, it's the genie. It's not the genie, it is me, Curie. Stop that! The door to the basement slams shut. M grabs the multi and starts fiddling with it. Should you be doing that? Oh, it's fine. Curie taught me how to work it that last time we got locked out outside in the basement or the balcony. Um, watch, I'm just gonna teleport it right back to her. M triumphantly hits a button instantly. The power goes out. Yeah. And the room is left totally dark. Uh-oh. Suddenly, all of the doors in the apartment simultaneously flash with light. <laughs> and we hear a weird hum. Then, the lights come back on, and everything seems normal again. Oh. M still holds the multi in her hands. Okay, never mind, plan B. M walks to the basement door and opens it. Incoming, Curie! She tosses the multi toward the basement. An instant, it passes through the door flame, or door frame. It's a door flame. <laughs> the whole place is on fire. <laughs> it is in my mind. <laughs> Uh, the instant it passes through the door frame, it disappears in a flash of light and then comes flying through the door to the bedrooms on the opposite side of the room, hitting M in the back of the head. Oh. Ow! Still waiting down here? M wheels around. She sees the multi at her feet. Okay. M bends down, picks up the multi and tosses it through the basement door again. Again, there's a flash of light. And the multi comes flying through the room and hits M in the back of the head. M wheels around, sees the multi at her feet. This seems to be a problem. No, 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 no. I, th I, th I think I got it. M picks up the multi, runs to the bedroom door, and throws it through. It disappears in a flash of light. And then comes flying from the basement door and hits M in the back of the head again. Oh, never mind, I don't got it. Viking grabs the multi from her. Allow me. Viking fiddles with the multi. Once again, the lights go out. All the doors in the apartment simultaneously flash with light. And we hear a weird hum. Then the lights come back on. Everything seems normal again. There, it is fixed. 
I sh shall celebrate this victory with a vigorous walk outdoors. Viking <laughs> saunters to the front door of the apartment and throws it open. As she crosses the threshold, there's a flash of light. <laughs> and she disappears. <laughs> Viking finds herself in the bathroom. She shrugs, turns around, tries to walk out. There's another flash of light. Viking finds herself in M's room. She shrugs, turns around, tries to walk out. There's a flash of light. We're in the living room. <laughs> it's moments later. M is still standing there, walking around in confusion when Viking emerges from the closet. We are doomed. <laughs> they both cross to the couch and sit down. The basement door flies open. Humanity will drown in an ocean of blood before I am caged again. I will lay waste to your... Still waiting on my multi down here! All right, don't interrupt. That is so rude. <laughs> the basement door slams shut. We need to get Kiri her multi. She'll be able to fix this. But how to discover which of these doors leads now to the basement? They both think about it for a second. Then! <gasps> oh! I got it! M rummages behind the couch and comes out with a big ball of yarn! <gasps> this yarn belongs to Catman Scruthers, but I think she'll be okay with us using it to save Curie. As well as ourselves. M turns to Catman, who is resting on a nearby pillow. Catman, is it cool if we use your yarn? The neighbor's dog is my mortal enemy. <laughs> I will take that as a yes. <laughs> Viking rummages behind the couch, finds her helmet and hammer, and equips herself. M ties one end of the yarn to one of Viking's horns. All right. Viking, go forth. Find the basement. Viking charges through one door and re-enters through another, now leaving a trail of yarn behind. Oh, yeah. I'm a genius. Guess what? There's a title card, and it says, The Whole Ball of Yarn Later. And we're in the living room. It's day. M and Viking both sit on the couch again. A giant tangled web of yarn links all the doors in the apartment, except the basement. A thread still trails from Viking's horn. M looks confused. Viking looks beat. I am not a genius. Perhaps we should stop before we make the situation worse. But well, we have to save Curie! It seems Curie has to save us. However, all is not grim. For while we may not be able to get to the basement, we can get to the kitchen. <laughs> How does that help us? Viking gives a sly look. And they were in the living room! And it's later! <laughs> M and Viking watch Crown of Betrayal. On the table before them is every type of junk food imaginable. It looks like they've emptied the whole kitchen. How could you have abandoned me like that, Mother? I never stopped searching when you were lost. Well, young Philroy, perhaps you should have. We hear the sound of stabbing. Oh! And screaming. Oh, I missed! I missed! Oh. <laughs> Again, I miss. Which queen is that? Oh, that's Cecilia, queen of the South Northerners. She's just the worst. I love her. <laughs> it is difficult to keep track of the many characters, but I do enjoy the excessive sex and violence. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> the door to the basement opens and Curie walks out, looking a little worse for wear. Okay, everyone, it's over. I did it. <laughs> So what happened? Curie crosses to the couch and grabs her multi off the coffee table. Well, since no one brought me my multi, and thanks for that, by the way, I had to improvise. What did you do? It actually worked out pretty well. Turns out Jeannie just didn't want to go back into the lamp, and since to her the basement is the size of a mansion, I told her she could stay. Uh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. She'll be kicking in for rent. I'll get her her mailbox key. <laughs> Curie looks at the yarn strung across the room and the junk food cluttering the table. What have you two been up to? We've been hanging out, stuffing our faces and watching Crown of Betrayal, and let me tell you. She gestures to Viking. This lady is awesome. <laughs> Indeed I am. As are you, Em, with your Daring yarn plan and respectable taste in entertainment. They high five. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. This is great. Let me run to the bathroom and clean up, 
and then I'll join you. Yes! Indeed! Curie darts into the bathroom. There's a flash of light. <laughs> and a moment later, she walks into the apartment through the front door. No, but seriously. What else have you two been up to? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the living room. <laughs> What are we doing <laughs> in the living room? We're doing a credit sequence. <laughs> yes! M. Viking and Curie all sit on the couch eating junk food and watching Crown of Betrayal. From the TV, we hear meaty chopping noises. I missed. Splashing liquid. I missed too. And hideous shrieks. <laughs> Viking and M have huge smiles on their faces. As M watches, she re-rolls the ball of yarn. Curie has her hands over her eyes, but is peering out between her fingers. Oh, she won this time. And we are now in the living room. <laughs> Guess what? It's a tag scene. <laughs> Viking walks past the open basement door with an armful of ice cream bars. As she passes the door, she lobs one down into the basement. Thank you. <laughs> and with that, we end episode two. Speaking of which, stay tuned for episode two of season one, the one only, one and only, live shower repeat. I love, I know live shower. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. Yay! We're back. And handing it off. <laughs> Beautiful thing. <laughs> oh my God. A child's laughter. <laughs> You're gonna a, burn that in hell? A hummingbird in a prom dress. <laughs> the concept of love and justice. These are beautiful things. See them in your mind. Build a fire, pretend you're the devil, send them to hell! <laughs> Compared to what these performers, that, 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 these are performers. What they're going to bring to you through this, I think it's called a camera, I don't know. <laughs> but that's the magic of the future. <laughs> Remember when we started the show? That was the past. <laughs> We're now in the future. Wow. <laughs> As we go, future girl. <laughs> Interventions. Live read Ooh. episode three, Ooh. written by Hector Lowe. Woo! <laughs> We are in Curie's room. It is the morning. <clears throat> Curie is still fast asleep in bed when her multi flashes and sounds a wake-up alarm. <coughs> she hits it to turn it off. Slowly, she raises her head and rubs the sleep out of her eyes. Then she reaches for the multi and presses a button. <coughs> There's a flash of light, and suddenly, Curie is standing up. She presses another button. <coughs> There's another flash of light, and her pajamas are replaced with clothes, and her hair is now clean and styled. She presses the button a third time. There's another flash of light, and her bed is instantly made. Curie looks satisfied with the state of her room and her appearance, and hits the button again. There's a flash of light, and she disappears from the room. We're in the dining room. What time is it? I'll tell you, it's day. Why didn't you know that? Because I have to tell you. <laughs> Viking is sitting at the table, constructing a peculiar fishing rod-like apparatus from a dowel and wire when Curie teleports in. What you working on, Viking? It is a chicken snare. What's it for? Snaring chickens. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hungry, you don't need to cobble together some primitive doodad. Curie whips out the multi again. I can materialize a chicken for you. No, thank you. Viking puts the finishing touches on her snare and stands its base firmly on the ground with a thunk. I prefer the old ways. But why catch, shave, and electrocute a bird by hand when you can just teleport dinner from Chicken Dimension 9, where the chickens all come evenly roasted and perfectly seasoned? <laughs> of course you do not understand. You are a weak, brainy person who uses your head instead of your hands to do all things. You rely on magic and trinkets instead of a hard instead of hard work and effort, like a baby or a wizard. <laughs> hey! That's not fair! I am not a wizard baby! <laughs> Curie taps a button on a multi and teleports out of the room! <laughs> we are in the kitchen! I'm gonna tell you when it is. 
It's later. <laughs> Curie is using a multi to wash dishes, clean counters, and sweep the floor. M and Vikings enter, looking all business. Curie? Um, can you have a seat, please? We need to talk to you. What is this? An intervention. Viking and I have been talking, and we think you've been starting to rely on your multi way too much. She holds up a copy of Psychology Made <laughs> Fast <laughs> and Easy. <laughs> According to this book, which I've read the wiki for, you'll never... <laughs> you will never be truly self-reliant if you keep depending on quick fixes. Indeed. It shall stunt your personal development. Look, I am perfectly self-sufficient without my multi, and I can prove it using my multi. Watch as... Curie stops as the reality of the situation dawns on her. Oh. It's all right, Curie. We all have our flaws. For EG, I can't think of a good way to abbreviate, for example. <laughs> <laughs> And I undoubtedly had flaws as well. <laughs> so what do I do? You have to go without your multi long enough to prove that you don't need it. How long is that? The book says a week. Okay. A week. She places the multi on the counter. Five whole days. <laughs> Seven. Seven? Oh, right. We're still before Apple instituted mandatory eye time. <laughs> okay, yeah, fine. Seven days without my multi. I can do this. M and Viking exchange uncertain looks. And we go to a title card, and on that title card there are words, and those words are day one. <laughs> we then go to the bathroom. It's day. Curie applies toothpaste to a toothbrush in huge quantities. Grimacing, she places the brush in her mouth and pushes it back and forth as if carving a cliffside. We're in the kitchen. It is day. Curie stands in front of the sink, staring in bafflement. Her hair is a mess. All her garments are unbuttoned, unzipped, untied. She bats at the faucet like she's never seen one before. We're in the living room. It is day. <laughs> Curie wrestles with a bag of chips, struggling to open them. She weeps in anguish. <laughs> we are in the dining room. It is day. Viking sits fiddling with her chicken snare. Curie enters disheveled and exhausted. This has been the worst week ever. Viking looks at a clock. It has been but 12 minutes. <laughs> Curie retrieves a can of soda from the fridge and regards it analytically, turning it over and over in her hands. Giving up, she starts banging it violently on the counter. But just then, M comes running in. Hey, whoa! Open! <laughs> Open, you damn thing! Release your delicious sugar water! M pries the can from Curie's fingers. Defeated, Curie embraces M and balls. Why do they hide soft drinks in aluminum puzzle boxes? <laughs> M comforts her awkwardly. Why must everything be so difficult? A good blade is forged with hot fire and frequent folding. Was that a metaphor? I can't tell without the metaphor detector on my multi. <laughs> You're going to have to do things on your own without your multi now. M hands her the can and nods encouragingly. Curie tentatively pops the top. Predictably, a geyser of soda sprays <laughs> forth. M smiles and gives her a double thumbs up. <laughs> Curie smiles back, feeling confident. She pours the soda out and laps her tongue haphazardly at the mid-air stream. Baby steps. <laughs> A title card appears. There are words on it. It's not blank. Why would you think that? Those words say, day three. We're in the living room. It is day. Curie sits on the couch watching TV. She is happily rolling her clothes into tight balls, binding them with rubber bands, and dropping them into a basket. M enters. Huh, you seem more chipper. 
I have embraced the elegant simplicity of your primitive lifestyle. M notices the television. What are you watching? Is this the Weather Channel? Yes. One channel is all that is needed. The extravagance of choice seeds desire. Desire is the parent of unhappiness. M looks a little weirded out. <laughs> okay. Sure. A title card appears. There is a pause. Words appear. <laughs> Day five. <laughs> We're in the living room. It's night. M enters from the bedroom. Hey, Carrie, do you smell something burning? I j The room is lit entirely by candles. <laughs> Curie sits on a bed of blankets in the middle of the floor, swaddled in burlap. She is softly whistling and playing a mandolin inexpertly. M backs out of the room and carefully closes the door. Nope. I wonder what would happen now. It's a title card! <laughs> there are words on it. Those words are day seven. And we are in the dining room. And it's day. Viking is modifying her chickens now. When M enters. Viking, I think we need to discuss Curie. Because she is insane now. Exactly! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she has taken all of my boots and replaced them with sandwich bags. <laughs> she lifts a leg to reveal a Ziploc clad foot. Yeah, and then there's what she's done with the television. They turn to the place where the TV once stood. It is now occupied by a crudely constructed puppet theater <laughs> manufactured from cardboard boxes and I think, socks. I think the tube sock is me. <laughs> <sighs> we might have made a mistake taking her multi away. I agree. You have made a large mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what do we do about it? What does the book say? Ah, nuts to the book. It claimed it would make everything quick and easy, but instead it made everything slow and difficult. What we need is a solution that'll make everything quick and easy. This <laughs> sounds strategy indeed. Let's just go back in time and stage another intervention. No, that is what got us into this mess in the first place. No, no, not with Curie, with ourselves. Viking thinks about it for a moment. I see. To the time machine! I think not, chums! Curie bounds into the room. Curie! You're looking... sane? <laughs> Can the sweet talk. I know what you're planning. I've been spying on you two. She points to the wall. We see one half of a tin can phone hanging from a nail. <laughs> <laughs> the string is knotted and disappears out the window. That shouldn't even work. Well, you're too late. I've already disposed of the time machine. There is a distant beeping and the sounds of a truck. That'll be the garbage truck now. M tries to barge past Curie, who grabs her around the waist, holding her back. The two wrestle. Curie, we're trying to help you. you don't understand. We can live in a garden utopia free from machines. We'll turn butter and wear burlap tunics. We'll make sustainable bracelets out of seashells. And we can finally... M manages to pin Curie. Viking, it's up to you now. Viking flees the apartment. No! There is a time machine noise and a flash of light. Title card appears seven days ago. We're in the kitchen. It is day. Past M, past Viking, and past Curie are mid intervention. Okay, yeah, fine. Seven days without my multi. I can do this. Past M and past Viking exchange looks as past Curie leaves. There is a knock at the front door. <coughs> past M and past Viking open it. <coughs> to see Viking. <gasps> Time nonsense. Indeed. I must warn you, do not go down this path. Without technology, Curie shall go mad. They all stare at each other. There is a law. She turns back toward the apartment. <laughs> hey, Curie! Yeah? Forget everything we just said. Kay! 
There is a loud zap from off screen. Viking looks pleased with herself. And we go to the kitchen. It's a credit sequence. Curie whistles the Andy Griffith Show theme, or something that we won't be sued over. <laughs> As she contentedly dances around the kitchen, using her multi to make toast, stir coffee, clean pans, and turn the faucet on and off, and on again, and off, and on again. And we are in the dining room for a tag scene. M, Curie, and Viking all sit around the table, eating chicken with silent satisfaction. And with that, friends, we end episode three. Yeah! <laughs> that was good. That Next was up good. is our season one uh, finale Ooh. of Ooh. The Wonderful Thursblatt. Enjoy! I think that was wonderful. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a group countdown. We are back. Woo! That was Thursblatt. Yeah. Um, oh, written by our dear friend Mia Rosella. Uh, and we are back for our final episode, but first. Beautiful things. <laughs> oh my God! Think about them. Be Up here, good. where your where your brain bucket is. Oh. It's a brain bucket. It's science. <laughs> Beautiful things. Uh, friendship. Aww. A perfect summer's day. Oh. A sexy puppy, maybe. Oh, what? Whoa, Think this about, internet, it's beautiful, you know. it's beautiful. It's a, it's a puppy, There's it's a got a wig. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty puppy. Woof. Pardon my alliteration, it's a pretty puppy. <laughs> a pretty puppy on a summer's day with friends. Mm. Enjoying a picnic. Pretty puppy picnic. <laughs> with pretty darn with beautiful. With pals. So that's what's happening. Beauty. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Take it in. Take it all in. And then breathe it out because <laughs> those things that we mentioned. Where can they go? To hell! <laughs> <laughs> Buy them a ticket! <laughs> They're going to hell because what's happening here, at, this is the table where it's happening. Give me, give me, the, give me the hammer. This, <laughs> this is the concepts we talked about. They went to hell. They're gone. <laughs> I think my microphone may have come off because I'm so excited no! <laughs> about the beauty. Damn it, the beauty that's <laughs> happening with this acting, with these people. And you probably want to know, who are they? Who are these beautiful people? Are they the cast of Friends? No, yeah. go to hell, cast of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> go, go play in a fountain and drown yourselves. You're not even on anymore. These people are on. These people are on. What are their names? Clayton, let's start with you. Clayton Cogswell. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Bonnie Gordon. Hey, I'm Xander Genere. <laughs> I'm Heather Wood. I'm Amy Dallin. Mm. And I'm Gina DeVivo. Mm. And I'm your internet friend, Darren DePaul. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And we are the cast of Friends. We are the cast of Friends. <laughs> I call Phoebe. Oh, no, God. damn it. We all call Phoebe. Have you met us? <laughs> We're a cast of Phoebe. Yeah. I'm Joey. I'm Joey. Um, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more of a Chandler, I think. Okay. <laughs> We've got Please, this. write in <laughs> who you think. We are Tell in the cast, cast of Friends. Oh, wait, I'll be honest, I'm Janice. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. That was beautiful. Shanla Bing. That was a beautiful so impression. Did we have to get married? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. That's Did the kind of beauty that no, we're talking about. Yeah. You transform it. Fran Drescher wasn't here. Oh, no. But for a minute, I thought she was. No. <laughs> because of the beauty of your acting. And we're about to see some beautiful acting because it's time for Future Girl. <gasps> Have yourself a meta little Christmas. Live read, episode four, written by Nick Gilman and Rick Bud. <gasps> we are in the living room. <sighs> it is day. Viking is sitting on the couch reading a copy of Modern Society for Dum Dums. The front door flies open. <laughs> Curie marches into the living room mid complaint and trails behind her. And it's like we're not celebrating Christmas at all. We're still going to celebrate Christmas, Curie. Not my Christmas. You want to light the roof on fire. It's traditional in the future, Em. How else will Santa Borg know where to land his cube? <laughs> I told you, you can light a whole bunch of candles. It can't be a bunch of little fires. It has to be one big fire. One big fire will burn the house down. You are the meanest, most radical roommate ever. It's like <laughs> living with Dr. Doom. 
except he would probably let me write, light the roof on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Curie storms off toward the bedrooms. M sits down next to Viking. That's why I never ask before I set a fire. <laughs> Curie storms back into the living room, multi in hand. Em, it's about time that someone taught you a little lesson about appreciating your roommates. Curie starts fiddling with the multi. Of course, it being the holiday season, I'll have to respect the Yuletide Treaty between Planet Dickens and the Capra Star Empire. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that by law, your lesson will have to take the form of three ghostly visitors who will give you visions of an alternate past, present, and future where one important detail is changed from your actual life leading to a meaningfully different outcome. Wow. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Try reading the treaty sometime. Now hold still. Wait. Fury points the multi at M. Wait. Why? Before we start, I just need to see your multi for one second. Curie absentmindedly starts handing the multi to M. Sure, here you At the last moment, she pulls the multi back, suddenly suspicious. Wait, you're not planning to turn my lesson on me, are you? Oh, no, definitely not. I wouldn't even know how. Okay, good. She hands the multi to M. But hypothetically, if I was trying to turn your lesson on you, how would I do that? It'd be super easy. You'd just point the multi at me and press the big button. Cool. Good to know. M points the multi at Curie and presses the big button. There is a zap. <laughs> and Curie's eyes roll up and ahead as the screen goes white. We're in the living room. It is an alternate past. Curie finds herself standing in the corner of the living room. Beside her is the ghost of alternate past. It's Viking with angel wings. I am the ghost of alternate past. Prepare for a vision from your own history that does not go the way you remember. This is all wrong. This lesson isn't for me, it's for M. She's the one who was being a jerk. Perhaps there is a lesson you need to learn as well, Curie. Can we get this over with? I know I don't get to wake up until I sit through all this nonsense. Behold. The ghost gestures at the couch. On it sits past Curie. She is joined a moment later by past M, who flops down next to her. Aw, oh, who am I kidding? I can't keep a job. I live in this crummy apartment and I barely hang out with anybody but you. In the corner, Curie turns to the ghost. Hey, I remember this. It's that time M lost her mojo and was gonna move back in with her parents. But do you remember this? The ghost directs Curie's attention back to the couch. Past Curie. That is incredibly pathetic. If I were you, I'd probably give up immediately. So you think I should move home? No doubt about it. You should leave as soon as possible, too. Why waste time? Okay, then. I guess I'll go tomorrow. What are you, are you gonna be okay? Don't worry about me. I'll have you replaced before you even make it back to wherever you're from, Zwill. <laughs> and of course, I've always got Viking. At that moment, past Viking runs in from the bedroom. She proudly displays her authentic Viking helmet, to which she has crudely duct taped cheap plastic horns. Homemates, observe, horns. In my time, we Vikings did not wear horns, but surely we would have had we only just thought of it. Truly, your modern society is a wondrous place. Viking puts a helmet on proudly. Oh. I'm gonna go outside and practice charging with these mighty adornments. Great idea. Did you know there's a whole underground horn fighting culture? I never would have brought it up around M, but she's leaving, so who cares? Intriguing. Oh. Past Viking runs out the front door. In the corner, Fury turns back to the ghost. Why am I so mean in this lesson? You know, this is but part of part one of three. Give it a chance. The ghost whacks Curie on the forehead. And everything goes white. We are in the living room. It is the alternate present. In the same corner of the living room, Curie comes to, standing next to the ghost of alternate Christmas present. It's M with a halo. Present, right? <laughs> Alternate Christmas present, actually. Sure. Can we get to it? Um. Behold! 
<laughs> she just has told the couch where alternate Viking sits. She's wearing a helmet with an impressive set of horns and reading a copy of Illegal Horn Fighting for Dum Dums. Alternate <laughs> Curie scurries through the front door looking worried. Oh boy, I may have made a mistake. Uh, what happened? Well, we were out there getting ready to set the roof on fire, you know, for the Christmas tradition. Anyway, there was a school bus out front, and L, the roommate we got to replace M, was really into a discussion of the consumerist nature of the holiday, and I didn't want the kids to hear anything they couldn't unhear, so... The front door flies open, and L storms in. What the rose petals gives you the fairy dust and right to decide what smiley face and words I can puppy nose and say. <laughs> what have you done, Curie? I used my multi to replace her swears with random happy things. Elle lights a cigarette. You know, sometimes you could be such a kitten-faced jerk, Curie. You can't handle my sunbeams. Your fuzzy buzzing attitude is holding Vikings while I'm fighting back. She just wants to snuggle some mother huggers up. <laughs> sometimes I do just want to snuggle some mother huggers up. And I do feel you judge me for that. I'm gonna take that daffodilian multi and then dance it so far up your ponies that you celebrate when you noodles. <laughs> In the corner, the ghost leans toward Curie. Are you starting to understand, Curie? No, and why is this part Christmas when the last part was just some random time of year? <sighs> Forget it, you're the next ghost problem. She whacks Curie on the forehead and everything goes wide. We are in the living room. Potential alternate future. Curie comes to in the same corner yet again. This time she stands with the ghost of potential alternate future. A double of Curie in a Grim Reaper style robe. This must be the future. Potential future? Potential alternate future? Curie looks to the ghost. The ghost says nothing. This one doesn't even talk? Ah, oh, jeez. We're almost done here, right? The ghost gestures toward the front door. It opens, and future L and future Viking enter, dressed all in black. Though she was a notorious killer of joy, it is sad that Curie died in that bed fire caused by the lit cigarette you flicked in her room. It was an accident. No doubt, my friend. Accidents happen. They flop on the couch. Future L lights a cigarette. Nice funeral, though. Mostly, I'm just glad that you can't be cro uh, you can't be prosecuted for causing the death of someone who hasn't lived yet. <laughs> a lucky break for you, indeed. She will censor you no more. And she won't get in the way of your dream of becoming the world champion of underground horn fighting. Still, I shall miss her. She was one of a kind, our Curie. There is a flash of light and a time travel noise. And suddenly, Lurie, practically Curie's doppelganger, what? stands before them. What? <laughs> Who the hell are you? I'm Lurie. I heard this was a place to come if you're a plucky young time traveler who loves hanging out, cursing, and illegal horn fighting. Oh, wow, Lurie, you'd be twice the roommate that Curie ever was. Can you sign a lease and live with us forever? I can. Ugh. And since I'm a time traveler, I already have. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls a signed lease out from behind her back. Viking, Lurie, and L hug. Aww. And we are back in the corner. Okay, great! If I had been way meaner to M a while ago, I would be dead at some point in the future and I'd get replaced. So what? What is that supposed to teach me? The ghost merely shrugs, then whacks Curie on the forehead, <coughs> causing everything to go white. We are in the living room. It is the present day. Curie comes to, standing in the middle of the living room. M still has the multi pointed at her. Viking looks on with interest. Did you kill her? I hope not. <laughs> Curie's eyes flutter open. How long was I out? Like 10 seconds. Did you learn your lesson? Yes, that we should have let Planet Dickens and the Capra Star Empire annihilate each other. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to combine ghosts with alternate realities and a vaguely Christmassy theme in service of teaching life lessons is not a functional idea. That's it. Nothing about not burning down the house. 
<laughs> oh, right. We should get some ashtrays. Trust me on that one. <laughs> it's a start. M. Hans Curie back her multi. Merry Christmas, Curie. Merry Christmas to you too, M. Now hold still! Curie points the multi at M! No, don't! Curie zaps M with the multi! Oh. And everything goes wide. <laughs> and we are in the living room. <laughs> and we are seeing a credit sequence. <laughs> <laughs> the three ghosts sit on the couch. The ghost of alternate past holds up a DVD of Scrooge, a DVD of A Muppet Christmas Carol, yes. and a DVD of It's a Wonderful Life. The ghost of potential alternate future looks over the selection. <laughs> and oh yes, they are nodding. <laughs> and we are in the kitchen. It's quiet because it's a tag scene. <laughs> Curie and Laurie sit at opposite ends of the table. They glare at each other. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we end the Future Girl live reading spectacular. <laughs> Can we get the, the one Catman line that we skipped? Oh, right. That was my bad completely. Oh, it's, all good. it's all good. We are back in the script. <laughs> Pretend you're there. Pre I We're traveling to the past now. <laughs> M Remember M that a time in the script. I'll do it. And things are happening. I put away my script. But let's Here's see. One. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Like you're nice the meanest, one. most tyrannical roommate ever. Right, Catman? I am not allowed to leave the house. It's like living with Dr. Doom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that we had the you in there. Oh, oh, that was, that was, was beautiful. So that was, How do we go that, on? How do we go on? <laughs> Mia, where can people find yeah. you on the internet? Um, my name is spelled M-I-A-R-E-S-E-L-L-A, -E -L -L -A, and that's on Twitter and Instagram and all the places, and my website is miaracellaisagrownup.com. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You know me. I'm your internet pal, Darren DePaul. Uh, I'm in a game called Overwatch and Final Fantasy and a bunch of animation and commercials and things like that. But tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. on Geek and Sundry, one of my dearest friends in the world, the person that makes me laugh harder than anyone, including these guys. This is so special. We can burn in hell! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> Amy Vorpal is very special to me. How special? Someone get a match. I'm burning them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's how beautiful Amy Vorpo and my friendship is. So we do a show on Geek and Sunday called uh, Darren and Amy Have to Do a Morning Show. Tomorrow our guest is Phil Lamar, one of my inspirations. I'm so excited to have him. Uh, if you're up early or if you're on the East Coast or somewhere else in the world where it's not going to be 5.30 when I get to the, the studio, <laughs> please join us uh, for Darren and Amy Have to Do a Morning Show. We love doing it. And... Uh, Okay. This was. Where can they find you on the internet? Oh, you, you know, I'm Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Look for some Reinhardt stuff or whatever. <laughs> I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I'm Darren! <laughs> I'm your internet friend! <laughs> Don't send me to hell. <laughs> Gina, who are you? Hi! Hi, I'm Gina DeVivo, and you can find me online at Pocket Gina. And tomorrow, we're gonna be doing our craft show, Minds and Crafts, and gonna be on Shield of Tomorrow. Woo! So tune in on Geek and Sundry and hang out with us some more. Yeah. I'm Amy Dallin, you can find Woo! me. This is my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash enthusiasm. Thank you to everyone.
everybody hanging out. Uh, you can find me at Enthusiasm in most places. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to Saving Throw for giving us this huge yes. thing. Oh, the space we're in right now uh, is Saving Throw. And thank you so much to Dom, who's right there. Huge thanks to Rick Bear. Yeah. Who is camera and tech and, and all things today. <laughs> uh, to our mods, thank yeah. you, yeah. as always. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the three things I wanted to make sure I said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm Heather Wood. You can find me on Twitter with the handle Heather Wood, but there are two underscores between Ooh. Heather and Wood. You can do that? You can't. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> So many Heather so Woods. I'm Xander Genre. Uh, you can find me on the Alpha Show Sagas of Sundry Madness. Cool. There'll be a new episode on Thursday, so make sure that you tune in for that, which Darren is also a part of. Is or no, I'm sorry, Mr. Wren is a part of. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's two of us. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also a part of the nerd parody band, The Library Bards. Oh yeah, and I'm at Xanderific on Twitter. <laughs> Hello, I am Bonnie Gordon. You can find me at Bonnie Bell G on Twitter and Instagram and at Library Parts. <laughs> uh, milk all that applause. <laughs> Yeah, if I keep doing the jazz hands, they'll love them. Uh, so yeah, find, watch me tomorrow with these lovely ladies on the show of tomorrow. Yeah. And Sam, Sam's on there. Yeah. I was like, Sam is here too, where's Sam? Sam is down there. Oh, hi. I've got my own thing. Oh, yeah. I, I come I'm like just passing it around. <laughs> uh, my name is Clayton Cogswell. Um, I'm not on the darn internet. Um, I, I, I have a, a Twitter. You can find me at Clayton Cogswell, but I never check it, so I'm so sorry. Um, but but um, the, I have a little movie that's out right now um, that is on Amazon. You can get it right now uh, on Amazon Prime called I Had a Bloody Good Time at House Harker. Uh, right now. Starring our dear friend Whitney Moore. Yeah! Uh, yeah, so that's that. I love you all. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, for Nick Gilman, Rick Budd, Jody Hauser, special bonus guests because they improve everything Sandalev, <laughs> Hector Lowe, and Alice Klamovich. Thank you so much for watching. Yay. Thank Yay. you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Greetings. Stay